Words can't describe how thankful I am to y'all. We're almost to 3,000 subscribers. As you know, I'm still trying to get this channel even monetized. So everything I'm doing is for the love right now, the grind. So every like, every comment, every subscriber helps the most. And I've been getting so many requests to do the gift uh, basket that I got to do it. Fluffy, my first Fluffy reaction. I thought reaction. it would be great if I could tell an old story. Let me know what I should react to next in the comment that section. never made it. And if somebody, uh, agree, if you agree with, with one that you see, thumbs up, let's go from there. To a one hour special. And uh, the cool part about this story is that it, it now has a different ending. We gonna watch the whole 14 minute. <laughs> Young Fluffo. The story is called The Gift Basket. Yeah. Oh man, they started cheering for the, oh okay. Some of you know it. Some of you don't know it. By the way, tomorrow I'm gonna uh, not up. I'm gonna be taking a break from uploading. I can't get a video up tomorrow, so I'm gonna take one day break and I'm gonna come back and just see how everything work out. Y'all keep watching in the meantime, though. Make sure you watch all my my but after reactions. This, you're I'll never be back. Gonna forget it. He's going Let's all know. All you have to know about this story is that all the people involved have always been and will continue to be friends. That being said, Martin and I. All the good ones start like that. Martin and I just like Tommy Rossetti, are scheduled to perform in City. Northern California. Usually we fly, but this particular day I was having a problem with Southwest Airlines. What they else wanted you know? me to pay for an extra seat for someone who wasn't traveling with me. <laughs> Take your time, you'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, I tell Martin, I'm not paying for an extra seat. Let's just drive, it's six hours. <laughs> so we headed north. Three hours into the drive, we're passing through a city called Fresno. And as we're passing, hey, Fresno 559, get us all way. Anyway, <laughs> as we're passing through Fresno, we start seeing billboards off the side of the freeway that said, performing this weekend at the Radisson Hotel, directly from BET's Comic View and Showtime at the Apollo, comedian G. Riley. I like how they And I look at Martina and go, oh shoot, here. G's in town. And Martina goes, yeah, I haven't seen G in years. So we're like, let's stop by the hotel and say hi. So we pull into the parking lot. We walk in. I tell Martin, he doesn't know we're here. I'm gonna crank call his room. He goes, what are you gonna say? I said, I'm gonna tell him that I'm the front desk and that he just received a gift basket. He goes, what's so funny about a gift basket? I said, I'm gonna describe it over the phone and I'm gonna make all the items that are in this imaginary basket become items that stereotypically a black person might like. But you're crazy. I said, I'll tell you what, we got two hours to kill. How about this? How about we go to the supermarket and we make oh God, an actual racist gift basket? You're too much now. And we'll have it delivered and we'll wait outside to see what happens. I said, Are you down? How's the gift basket going to get there before we go to you? the store? You get and we there. start to design the sickest practical joke ever. I get a shopping cart and I'm like, all right, we need a basket. So I find one. I take out the grass, the plastic eggs, and the chocolate rabbits. And we start hitting the aisles. First item I grab is a fried chicken about that big, okay? <laughs> See how quick that laugh was? <laughs> There's a few black people in here like, mother this better be funny. <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> it's hysterical. Let me just finish the story and then you could judge me in the parking lot. So anyway, then Martin hands me a miniature watermelon and I put it next oh, to the hell. fried chicken. Here's where it gets interesting. Employees oh, of the store yet. find out what we're doing and they start volunteering to help us finish the basket. Half of the employees were black, which made it so much more accurate. <laughs> aisle after aisle, aisle. One guy was stocking a shelf. He was an older white guy and we're like, sir, can you help us? What do you need? My buddy Martin and I are trying to make this messed up racist gift basket for our black friend. What a hilarious a practical joke. Can you think of something we can put? What a hilarious thing to get propositioned at work. Can you help me make this uh, <laughs> racist gift basket? Put in there? Well, yes, sir, I got you. And I, the guy was like, ah, you gotta have Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's at the end of the aisle on the right. Malt liquor's an XL over in the back of the store in the freezer section. It's on sale two for one. By the time we get to the register, all these different employees plus us came up with the basket that had fried chicken, watermelon, Kool-Aid, grape soda, God barbecue damn. potato chips, sunflower seeds, an ebony magazine, a Chris Rock DVD called Bigger and Blacker. The sunflower seeds, that's that's a that's a that's one that 
one of them black people helped him with. That's one of the ones you could tell. That's that's too accurate. Magnum condoms, new cigarettes. And we cigarettes. eat sunflower seeds like this. Facts, nigga. You eat the. You know what I mean? That ain't no freaky. What the hell? These are the sunflower seeds. You gotta pour them in your mouth. We don't eat them. You get a handful. You get the pilot ticket. Facts. A rack of ribs, the recipe for cornbread. It was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Icing on the cake. We find a greeting card that's on clearance from Halloween. And oh, it has a no. picture of three ghosts on the cover wearing sheets. <laughs> I tear off the half that says, Happy Halloween. And on the back of the card, I write, Welcome to Fresno. Love the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and we stick it to the basket. We made it all nice and pretty, and we haul ass to the hotel. We pull up. We walk in. The He's basket is hot as hell, so I'm racing in. I get inside, and I put it on the counter as fast as I can, bro. It's too perfect. There's a black girl behind the front desk. As soon as I put the basket down, I hear... Is that chicken? Uh, Ooh, let me on, see. Hold Shorty. on. Shorty <laughs> sent this back. Let me explain. 20, My name is Gabriel. This 25. Is we're a couple of years. years. And we're about to play a really crazy practical joke on a friend of ours who's staying here tonight by the name of G. Riley, who's also a comedian. Oh, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. Yeah, the one that's on the signs on the freeway. So as a practical joke, we went to the store and we made this messed up racist gift basket. That's, <laughs> that's why you can smell fried chicken. And she was like, what? <laughs> you need Jesus, that's what you need. <laughs> Kiki, girl, you better hang up Kiki. that phone. You ain't gonna believe what I'm looking at over here, girl. Listen, we think it would be... His impressions and sound effects, like his way of changing his voice is great. He's a voice actor face. It'd be hysterical if we could have you deliver the basket for us. She lost it. Oh, the hell you didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't just ask me to take that to a black man. You are out your damn mind. Oh, Lord, Lord, give me the strength to not kill the- Apparently, uh, the, count the person working at the counter was the mother from Good Times, nigga. <laughs> what in the- Who the hell actually talks like that? <laughs> Apparently- this nigga was in good times, nigga. This big ass Mexican over here, Lord. Mm -mm. Uh uh. Okay, look here, Nacho Libre. I don't care who you are. I am not doing it. Hell no. I'll give you 50 bucks. Where that motherfucker at? We follow her to the hotel room. She knocks on the door. Martin and I hide by the elevator on the floor. She knocks. <laughs> she opens the door, sees a beautiful black woman standing there with a gift basket. This is for you, baby. He says, thank you. Damn, he closes he's, the door. voice she acting so good. She sees us on the ground hiding, right? And she's like, y'all still going to hell. <laughs> we get up and we walk over to the door and we put our ear, listen, shh, listen. This is what we hear inside <laughs> Woo! chicken <laughs> oh kool-aid <laughs> he's getting excited over every single <laughs> item he's going to be a great gift <laughs> he gets to the greeting card what can a fresno love the chamber of commerce hell yeah then we feel him flipping the card over because his voice changed he's like oh yeah man this is what the f Outside the door, we heard racist bastards. <laughs> when we heard racist bastards, we lost it. Ah! Housekeeping is freaking out. ¿Qué está pasando allá? ¿Qué andan haciendo ustedes? Muchacho, ¿qué está pasando, gordito? ¿Qué andas haciendo? No! We're laughing, we're crying, we got boogers He's too coming good out. At that. We can't He's take too good it anymore. At that. We knock on the door. He's going to transform into three different people in this car. That's crazy. He yells, Who is it? Too easy. Chamber of Commerce. 
He rushes the door. I put my finger on the peephole so he can't see who it is, right? The knob starts to jiggle, then the door explodes open, and he's like, what? And he sees us, and he's like, ah! What's up, G? Man, y'all give a brother a heart attack. <laughs> Did you like your basket? Man, that was messed up. Oh, no, like he's it, cooking. Man? I love all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad because I actually enjoyed it. That's what he was trying to say. He's like, God damn, I want to be mad, but I was hungry and thirsty. You lucky nigga. <laughs> Who don't now, love fried chicken, man? A story that has been seven years in the making. Oh, does he have G with him? I would like for you to now hear, for the first time ever, the other side. Of that story. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Ladies and gentlemen, I flew him here to Hawaii so that he can share this with you. Give it up for my friend, Mr. G. Riley. You can tell Gabriel is like a more, like he's a performer. Cause I am, this is like a, a show. It feels more like a skit than it does a stand up comedy act. This guy is a performer. <laughs> Let's go, G. Huh? I want to hear your song. I, I got to be honest. I didn't know it was racist. I thought it was lunch. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, th <laughs> I thought it was lunch. I didn't know it was racist until I got back to my neighborhood. And brother, Tag my team neighborhood comedy me. They say, man, I... I don't believe you let that Mexican guy do that to you, man. That was messed up. I know you got him back. I said, what, buy him lunch? I can't afford to buy that man lunch. If I, if I buy him lunch, he'll be getting me again. But see, you gotta understand, it was the perfect set of circumstances when it happened. Because I'm laying across the bed in the hotel. I had never been to Fresno before. And I wanted something to eat, and I didn't know where to go eat. So I'm laying across the bed, and I'm saying to myself, where could I go eat? I wish I had some food. And all oh, of a sudden, damn. magically, <laughs> Prayers there's a knock on the door. And a black girl shows up with a gift basket. And I took the gift basket, and I said, they know how to treat their comedians up here. Fair enough. <laughs> and I'm walking to the bed, and I can feel the heat, and I can smell the chicken from the gift basket. Damn, I don't like, want oh, chicken. Damn. Cool. Because nobody smells chicken and thinks of racism. Facts. Right? Everybody loves chicken, man. Right, sir, I see the watermelon. I'm like, oh, this is cool. They know how to treat a comedian up in here. <laughs> I get to the card, and I look at the card, and I go, what the <laughs> is going on? I said, oh, my God, I'm working for the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I really started to panic because in my head, I'm saying to myself, is this for real? Because there were billboards all over the city with my picture. And I started thinking they were trying to scare me out of town. Oh, I didn't even think of that. So now I don't know what to do, right? And I start trying to call a promoter and the promoter's not answering the phone. Am I the only one that's just more, almost more interested in this story than the, than the stand-up? Like I dead ass am just like, damn, nigga, this is an interesting ass story. On, and it's festering in my head How and I'm end? nervous and I'm pacing the room so and all of a sudden turns. there's a knock on the door right and I go oh my god they come to get me <laughs> ah this is like an M. Night Shyamalan movie so I, so I ease over to the it's door just... right and I look through the peephole right and all I see is a brown dot right and I go I, I hear somebody out there cause I hear the breathing right I hear <laughs> so this was about 60 pounds ago right I, 60 pounds ago so I go to look down <laughs> But I said, oh my God, it got to be about five or six of them out there. Oh my God. <laughs> so I figure like this, I figure, okay, you know what? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You know, if it's going to happen, I'm going to go down swinging, right? 
So I put my <laughs> best black face on. You know, I, I tried to look mean. You know, I look, I look like this guy right here. I look like that guy right there, right? And I go, who is it? And they go, Chamber of Commerce. And I'm like, oh my God, the Chamber of Commerce is the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and I'm panicking. So I get to the door, right? And I pull the, open, the door open. And when the door opens up, these guys are falling all over the hall laughing at me. They're oh, he was ready to go. Ladies caught the oh, lady didn't know what was going on, right? She's scared to death because she sees a black dude with no shirt like this. So she grabs the lemon pledge like it's pepper spray, right? She's ready to get... <laughs> Oh, this is fire. This is, that's dope. Everything, now that I realize it's a practical joke, everything calms down, because I remember, now I remember how hungry I was. I'm like, okay, cool. Practical joke, right? So I go in the bathroom to wash my hands. While I'm in the bathroom washing my hands, I hear a commotion in the other room, right? I go back in the other room. They're going through the gift basket. The maid is leaving with the watermelon. Oh, Martina's you... drinking my 40. What? The bastard is eating my chicken! Y'all ate his food? Nah, bro. That just felt like a dope-ass skit. That was a very creative comedy. So I've never seen a nigga tag team. I, you finish the story. I've never seen that actually made his story even better, bro. Shout out to Fluffy, bro. And his, um, uh, 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 uh what's it called? Impressions or, or voice acting is great, bro.